Have you ever seen how some musicians will hide a secret image inside their songs? Try it. You can Google hidden images, hidden spectrogram in a song. And some interesting things will come up on your image search. But there are a couple problems here. Most of these are really creepy images. And even though they exist and they're out there, maybe you want to make your own. Say, for example, you want to make a sound with this image, with the University of Minnesota and a golden gopher. Today, what I'm going to do is show you how to use R to generate a sound whose spectrogram matches this image. Let's go to the code. So it calls in a bunch of packages here that have some very useful functions for this, particularly the audio and image R packages. So I'm going to have it look up these images from a folder that I've already set up on my computer, but you can just put your file path there load in that image. Now it's going to convert it to grayscale. What this does is determine the resolution of your image. So between 100 and 5000 hertz, I'm going to have 96 sine waves, which are essentially 96 pixels in between those frequencies. And here I'm sampling the sound at 44.1 kilohertz, which is pretty standard. So I'm going to run these lines. Now this is going to read in the image and divide it horizontally. So the way to understand that is if we have a line running right where the cursor is here, it's going to have no amplitude and then it's going to jump up in amplitude right here where it's dark. It's going to drop down a little bit and then jump back up. It'll be no amplitude here for a while and then once it finally gets the gopher it's going to come back on. So think of horizontal lines as tracking how dark the image is. And what it's going to do is turn that horizontal line into a sine wave where the loudness of that sine wave matches the darkness of the image. So these functions just do that. It converts the data into easily workable data frames. Um, it's going to resample the sound so it's, it actually sounds like a sound. And this is the part that takes um, the most time, even though it doesn't take very long, just a few seconds here. It's going to apply that function over all 96 sounds and envelopes. It's going to generate them. And then finally, it's going to add them all together. And then the final function here just saves it as a wave. And it's really as simple as that. So now that we have this wave, we can open it up in Prot and see what it looks like. So I'm just going to drag it right into the program here. And we can open it up and see that even though it's stretched a little bit on the first glance, if I change the aspect ratio, it does indeed match my target image, which we can see here. Now, it's not going to sound very good, but that's not really the point, right? So we can make some other interesting images. So we can read in something that looks just aesthetically pleasing or mathematical, like the spiral. And this turns out to give us a really interesting sound. So if we read in this spiral wave, you can see how we can start to generate some really interesting things. But notice um, for both of these images here that they have very clear and defined boundaries. And that's what makes this work pretty cleanly. Uh, when we convert it to a sound. If we had a different sound without these clean boundaries, say this image of uh, vanilla ice here, this is not going to produce a very good image uh, or a good sound um, for that matter. So uh, let's see what happens when we read in vanilla ice. So we're going to eventually make a sound called vanilla ice.wave. And to get there, we're going to read in that sound file. So let it do its magic. And now we can see what that sounds like. Call in our vanilla ice.wave. And you'll notice this is not particularly good looking. Now, if you um, squint for a little bit, you can kind of make out that image um, and compare it to the original, right? You can see the, the parts of his shirt and the shoulders. Um, and this, of course, is not going to sound very good. But it's just um, a little note of caution for when you're trying to make this, it's going to work a lot better when you have very clear defined boundaries in your image. So hopefully what you can do is use this script and just make some interesting images out of all your favorite things. So for example, um, you can read this in all your images. You can have, you know, a turtle and your Minnesota logos and the pipe operator and Mjolnir and Ashley and a bike and a gummy bear and popcorn. And, you know, you can have a blast with that. So the way to get to this code 
is right here on the Listen Lab GitHub page. Some of you might have already seen some other things involving prot, the VOT scripts, spectral ripple stuff. So here we're looking at the R custom spectrogram from image, obviously. And there's just one R file in there, and it's exactly the one that we've been using. Have fun!